Hello, we're going to continue our look at the World Wide Web. We're looking at a few different products you can launch, isn't quite the right word, it's different products you could use as a business to maximize your presence on the World Wide Web, perhaps. Now, for example, they're calling these information formats. So if you hear information formats mentioned in the exam, be on red alert for these different things. Starting with web pages. So web pages, as you'll know, are just different sections of a website and they connect within that one website, but also to other websites through hyperlinks. So you click a link on a web page, it might take you to another web page on that website. A website is owned by one entity, so one company maybe, but equally some links also take you across to other websites. And there are two types of web page you need to know about. A static web page is shown to the user exactly as it was held on the server. So you've got a client, you've got a server. The server sends the web page to the client. The client is usually a web browser and the web browser shows it. And what you see on your screen is in exactly the same format as it originated from when it was at the server. As you might know, the word static means it doesn't change. So this never changes between the server and the client. These are really simple. So usually just written in two languages, HTML and CSS. You may have written some basic HTML and CSS at some point. These are relatively easy to code. And so if you were paying somebody else, they would be cheaper because they're quite simple to make. But there's not a lot going on. They stay the same every time for every user, you see the same thing. But as you know, probably most websites are not like that. Most websites will change from time to time. Most websites look a bit different depending on what you've done before, maybe what account you have, what features you've paid for and so on. So a dynamic web page can change every time it is loaded. It might not change, it certainly can, it can change, but there can be some variety in how the web page looks. So this is not as simple to code. You also have to have a programming language involved in some way, something like JavaScript or PHP. So they're a little bit harder to code and harder to set up and maybe more expensive to set up but actually there are some benefits to it. So generally these are coded in separate sections. You might have a database connected to a web server and the database could get changed separately from your web server, which can make it easier when you're making changes once you have it set up. Let's say you're launching a new feature, all you do is write a new block of code and connect it up to your web server. It's easier to make changes once you're going but also because it changes every time it's loaded potentially, it means you can tailor it towards individual users. You can make things more specific towards individual users. But when you went onto YouTube, the way YouTube looked to you was a little bit different to how YouTube looks for me because it tailors individual videos just for you and just for me. So it can make things more personalized because it can change every time it's loaded. Now, all the following things can get launched from a web page. Let's start with blogs. So a blog is a written article about a particular topic. And the topic can be anything, but often it'll be somebody sharing updates and news and stories, usually of quite a personal nature. You will get companies writing blogs as well. And they tend to be a little bit more informal than say a press release or a bulletin or something like that. They might be more opinion-based, might be more about their sort of long-term journey. They are a little bit more relaxed often. Now, from the business perspective, they are relatively time-consuming to write. Of course, it's, it's a long article, but also people generally expect a blog to have fairly regular articles. You can't just write one article and leave it. It's meant to be updates over time. So that's why it becomes time-consuming. But the benefit is you can build quite a loyal audience. If what you're writing is interesting, people come back to it and follow it and share it. That might take a long time to build a big audience, but it does happen over maybe several years. Now, a slightly more modern and well-known version of a blog is a vlog. So a vlog is a video blog. where you have got an actual video and audio, not just text. Now, these are occasionally used by companies, not always, mostly done by you know, YouTubers and individual people because they're often less formal than even blogs are. Now, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. I put that in orange because it's not red, it's not green. It depends on the context. If you've got a really serious announcement, 
you're not going to do a blog a vlog but if it's more about showing sort of behind the scenes maybe a vlog might be a good idea now streaming platforms are obviously massive nowadays things like youtube are streaming platforms things like spotify things like netflix disney plus and so on so streaming platforms work by sending audio and or video to your computer without storing it so if you're watching netflix netflix is sending your computer the video and the audio but it's not getting stored on your computer it's just being shown to you straight away and then forgotten about now this means you can watch things immediately or listen to things immediately you don't need to download the entire file before watching or listening to it as you might know though it does mean often you can't you know download it for later lots of streaming platforms don't let you download stuff unless you pay more for example now a podcast is a product which can get given to you via a streaming platform. So this picture top right is of Spotify and of their podcasts section of the webpage. Now podcast is a spoken word audio file. So it's just audio in its pure form. You might see on YouTube say videos, which are podcast videos, but crucially the audio is the most important bit. You don't need a video. Now podcast isn't only streamed, it can be downloaded too. You might download the entire podcast to listen when you're on a plane or without internet, for example. Usually they're quite long. They're not just a short, snappy audio file. They're usually maybe 40 minutes, an hour, two hours, potentially. Now, a bit like blogs and vlogs, these are often a bit more personal, a bit more relaxed. They're not super formal, and so you probably wouldn't use it for a really important announcement. For individual people, there are benefits like you can you know, multitask with a podcast. You don't need to be sat watching a TV. You can walk around, you can do chores, you can commute to work, maybe. So they are good for individual people as well. Now other streaming services include things like internet radio. So here is Radio X, which I was listening when I was making this PowerPoint. So you can stream the uh, radio through the internet, not via an actual dedicated radio. Also music streaming like Spotify or Apple Music and catch up TV is something like BBC iPlayer or all four, where you can watch past TV programs through the internet. Now, unless you've got unlimited data, you probably need to have Wi-Fi or a wired connection to watch these because they'll take up a lot of data, a lot of bandwidth, but also they often have adverts, which could be a bit annoying, but generally there'll be a premium service, which you can pay to have adverts removed. So for individual people, there are, some, there are a few downsides, but clearly they all are quite convenient. Next up is social media. So social media are websites and applications that allow people to communicate and share information. So here are six examples. You probably recognize most, if not all of those. The top left one maybe is the one you might not. That's LinkedIn. It's used for sort of networking as an adult when you get jobs. Not a very interesting one, but it's quite popular. It's quite professional is the idea of LinkedIn. So as a business, you can make an account to share information about what you're doing, but also crucially to interact with customers. It's an easy way for customers to contact you and you to reply and help or give advice or deal with complaints, maybe. So benefits of this for a company is that you've got a big audience. Millions of people use social media and so you've got a massive audience available to reach quite quickly. A blog might take years and years and years to build up. Social media, you've got a more instant audience. And it's not just customers. Something like a newsletter might only go to your customers but social media has everyone on it, not just your customers. But there might be some costs. If you're doing things really professionally, really formally, you might need to hire a social media manager, which can cost money, of course. It's a salary and there might be other costs as well. And the risk is because there's such a big audience and you've got so little control over what the audience do, there might be things like trolling and offensive messages and complaints, which may impede your message. Impeding is where something limits your message. It might harm your message if people are complaining or being nasty. So you've got less control. I think social media can be quite risky for certain companies. The second last information format to cover are document stores, which are quite simple. These are just websites which enable you to upload and then download files which are held on a file server the website operates. So the best example of this is cloud storage where your files are held somewhere else by a big company like Microsoft in the case of OneDrive. So OneDrive, you might have used it before, is Microsoft's cloud storage provider and your files are stored here. You can share them, you can download it later, 
you can access it from any device, which is a key benefit of the document store. The idea of you can access your files from anywhere as long as you have an internet connection. So that's the main limitation. You've got to have a strong connection to be able to access your files. Another benefit is there is a big capacity, pretty much unlimited for most people because they're such big companies. But the more capacity you take up, especially as a business, often the more you end up paying. And it's not a one-off cost. You don't just pay a thousand pounds today. You pay it, say, every month, which can add up over time. The final servers to cover are RSS feeds. What it stands for is not important. And they're not the most modern technology. They're not used nearly as often as they used to be, say. But an RSS feed works with a user subscribing to the feed and they'll get updates from it. So you might, as a user, subscribe to multiple different RSS feeds. Here is a program where the user has got quite a few different feeds subscribed to, a bit like how on YouTube you subscribe to a channel, you subscribe to a feed. And as soon as they launch new updates, you get it shown in the feed. So it's a bit like a newsletter, but combined together and they're live. So it's very quick to get users up to date. All you do is write a little update and push it to the feed and it will show up in their timeline. And this is live, it happens straight away. You don't need to refresh the page. On YouTube, say, if, if a new video is released, you've got to refresh it. But an RSS feed, it will just come in live and you'll see the latest updates as they are released. Which is good because it means they can see what you're doing instantly. You know, a more relatable example might be something like on BBC News or BBC Sport, you might see these sort of live feeds. These are not RSS feeds, these are just web feeds, but it's a similar idea, right? You don't have to sit and refresh it. The next bulletin or the next message comes in as it's happening. Now, on the downsides, you've got to have connection. Of course, it's a web page, so you need to have internet. It's not live if you lose connection, but also it's got to be maintained. You might be writing articles, but somebody's actually got to push it to the RSS feed that would take up some time and some money.